Well, hello everyone. I am Fracture, and this is Let's Play Sacred on the PC. Well, at least the introductory video for it. I might get a little bit started into the gameplay, but I thought I'd describe the game a little bit first. Sacred was released in about 2004 by a developer house called Ascaron, and it's very similar to my last Let's Play, Divine Divinity. Same idea, pick a character, work your way around an isometric 3D world, collect weapons, kill stuff, that sort of thing. This is actually Sacred Gold, so it includes an expansion pack called Underworld and also two additional characters. The Dwarf, the guy I'm pointing at right now that isn't in shadow, and the Demon standing to his right. All the other characters came with the original game. I'll introduce each of these characters. Actually, they'll introduce themselves as I point at them. There's I've been reading a little bit up on this game. I did play this quite a bit a long time ago, much again like Divine Divinity. So it's not a blind let's play, but it's pretty close because I don't remember most of it. And I've been doing some reading up. When I start this game, I'll be starting it in what's called bronze, which is easy. When I read the FAQs and stuff, it suggests starting in that, but it doesn't suggest completing the game in bronze level. The game tends to get a little bit too easy, somewhere around 20th level, maybe earlier. And they actually recommend playing into the game until you start approaching like around level 20 and then starting again. I don't know how effective that's going to be for a let's play, if I'll actually do that or some sort of combination there. I've tried starting the game in silver and it's just a little bit too hard. So for the purposes of Let's Play, maybe I'll play to level 10 or something. I don't know how rapidly I'm going to level. We'll see. So you might see that. We might get to level 20 and start all over again at, at silver level. You can always skip videos if you don't want to watch the beginning of the game all over again or anything like that. The main reason they suggest that is not only does the game get harder and more challenging if you switch to silver level, all of the equipment scales as well, so you start getting more gold and better equipment. So it's better to do that than complete the game that's too easy for you in bronze. Anyway, so let's introduce these characters. They tend to talk a bit too much, but I'm going to point at each one and let them say their backstory. And uh, let's just start with that. So now in most games, this first guy, the Barbarian, is usually the easiest character to start with. Not in Sacred, apparently, at least not according, again, to the FAQs. I'll, uh, I'll make note of it when I get to the character that is ascent, uh, supposed to be the easiest to play. I'm a gladiator, an expert in close combat and trained in all types of weapons. I feel most at home in two-handed combat, man-to-man, -man, where I knock my opponent down with hard blows and taunt him as I send him into the next world. So, your typical barbarian, what he meant by two-handed combat was a two-handed sword, as opposed to sword shield. I'm a seraphim, descended from a race of mystical warrior angels from the era of the Wars of the Gods. The gods granted the seraphim heavenly magic to weaken their opponents before laying them low with whirling blades. Apparently she is the Jill of all trades, sort of a middle-of-the-road character. This world... How I've had enough of it. There were once worthy opponents in Ankaria, but those who spread fear and terror are long since gone. Fighting no longer holds a challenge for me, and life without fighting is meaningless, just like death. This will be the character I'll be playing. It's one of the new characters they added with the Underworld expansion. I think... I've been watching some of Variac's videos, and he does a role-playing thing where some of the decisions he makes actually make his life playing the game a little more difficult, but they're the decisions the character would make. I'm going to try and do that. I'll probably forget at some point during the Let's Play and just go on to playing the game, but I've decided she's going to be seeing the humans in the world as... I don't know how you would look at a pet, you know, so she's willing to solve their quests for them as a diversion, but at the same time, she doesn't have much of a concept of belongings, so she's more than happy to go and loot somebody's house right after aiding them, 
particularly if she needs the loot. She won't do it indiscriminately or if they seem to have some reason for wanting the loot. But if they're not willing to defend it, uh, she's more than happy to pocket it if it uh, moves her along in her quest. So she's happy to steal somebody's golden candlesticks if it means she can buy a bigger sword. So that's what we're going to be doing. A little bit of decision making based on her motivations. Once there were many like me. Children of the earth, folk of the mountains. We populated a world below this world. Rich and mighty we were. Enough that even kings would seek our assistance. Those times are gone. Just like my kindred spirits. I am but the last of my kind. Destined to preserve what is sacred to the dwarven race. It's not easy in times like these. But I will do my ancestors proud. I may turn down the music. It sounds like it might be a touch loud, but for now I'll leave it. That guy was uh, quite the soliloquy there. I've tried this guy out as well. He's, as you can see, he's a ranged fighter with a gun, but he also is quite good with an axe. And I decided not to go with him because ranged fighting in here, it's not bugged, but it's a little inconvenient. It's got the same concept as Diablo, where if you hold down the control button and click on a mob, they will not move and they'll continue to range fight, which is good, except clicking on mobs is a little bit on the difficult side. It's a little touchy. And if you miss, they'll sit there and fire at nothing, and the mob will come in and attack you before you realize that you actually didn't click on the mob. So it's actually more frustrating than you would think. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm kind of steering away from the range of characters. I'm an elf, a forest ranger and a hunter, at one with the natural world around me. My magic has a protective character. I favor the bow and arrow, firing accurate single or multiple shots, and only entering close combat when hard pressed. So it's a shame that range combat is a little flaky because the range combat as you increase in levels is actually pretty effective. A multiple spread magic arrows and that sort of thing. So it's not like they're very weak arrows or anything. You actually scale up well with the levels. I'm a battle mage, and apart from magic, I have discovered the warrior's arts for myself. I am skilled in using swords and staves when forced into close combat, but my most powerful weapon is the magic of the elements, with which I am able to shake the very foundations of the world. So in most games, this would be the most difficult starting character. Magic characters are often very difficult to start with in an RPG, because they're so vulnerable and at the beginning have very little magic. Apparently, he is the easiest character to play in the game. I'm a dark elf, and come from a power-hungry group of the elves. The ritual martial arts of our blood cult have turned me into a deadly shadow fighter, destroying my enemies with poisoned blades and precise blows from fists and feet. So, sort of a combination rogue monk. I am the vampiress with a living soul, a blend of nightly close combat warrior, by day vanquishing her opponents with the sword, and at night, a mad diabolical beast of prey tearing her victims apart and creating a ghastly following with blood-soaked kisses. So she, uh, you actually get to choose when you turn into a vampire. It's, it is your sort of secondary power switching back and forth. If you turn into a vampire during the day, then you're injured over time, as you might expect. She has lots of powers like health steal and that sort of thing, and what she was discussing at the very end there was she has a bite that will temporarily have mobs fight for you. So sort of mind control bite. Well, as I said, this is the this one I'm world. choosing. And now, now I've had uh, enough yes, of it. I know, I know. Blah, there blah, blah. were once worthy opponents in Ankaria, but those who spread fear and terror are long since gone. Fighting no longer holds a challenge for me, and life without fighting is meaningless, just like death. So, as I was trying to say before I was so rudely interrupted, this is actually her name, where it says Demon. I'm actually going to change this, I, just as I was waiting for her to shut up. I think I'll go with T. 
Tegan, spelled with the demon spelling. Uh, I like the name Tegan, and that, that's kind of semi-unique. So here's the level. I can choose bronze and silver. Once you complete a vast majority of the game at silver, you get gold. Um, and there's there's another one, uh, Neodymion or something like that. There's actually, with the expansion pack, came an even higher level. So as I said, we'll be starting at bronze. It's fairly easy. And then at some point, hopefully not too far in, I don't know how long it takes to get to 10, 20 levels, but somewhere along there we'll probably stop the game, return to the screen, and use import to pull the character in at level 10 to 15, uh, or 15 to 20, I mean, and start at silver. So let's start the game. Now as we start the game, each of these characters will start in a slightly different location with a slightly different sort of opening backstory. I think I am going to... I can't decide am I going to go through the tutorials and that sort of thing. I suppose so. Good way to burn some time and we'll just make it part of this introductory video. The other thing I'd like to say before I start this is resolution. I got this game from GOG. It's not certified to run in Windows 7, but as you can see, I'm in Windows 7, it's running fine. It took a little bit of fiddling to get it to work. I had to go and get it to run in compatibility mode, set it to administrative running, and that sort of thing. But it's running fine, I've done some tests. This Let's Play could end suddenly if I hit some sort of technical problem later in the game. You never know. You know, sometimes the game will suddenly just stop running when it's not supposed to run in Windows 7, and I'll have no no choice but to quit the let's play but so far so good I've actually played leveled up a few times with a lot of the characters and I haven't had any trouble so cross our fingers the other thing is resolution as I was saying this is from gog.com it is fixed at 1024 by 768 so that's what I'm recording in however if you upload that to YouTube it adjusts the size anyway and makes a mess of it so when I'm compressing this video for uploading, I'm actually going to shrink it down to 640 by 480 which is one of YouTube's standard resolutions and it won't mess with the size on me and make it look bad. So you'll be watching it in low def. I gain no benefit going up to say 1280 by uh, 720 or whatever it is. It just looks big and crappy because the resolution doesn't go that high. So better for me in terms of file sizes to go down one resolution. Sorry about that if it bugs you, but that's the way it's going to be. It does mean that I'm willing to upload longer files because the files are considerably smaller when I do that. I haven't decided if I'm going to do 15 frames a second or 30. The game runs somewhere between 18 and 20 frames a second. That's just what the game runs in. My computer is running it essentially idle. The processor is barely being used, but it never goes above 20-ish frames. So I may just go to 15 frames a second to save again file size. As for how much I compress it, how grainy and how how, how low a bitrate that I go, I haven't decided. It might be a little on the crappy side if you're watching it full screen because when it's this low resolution anyway, it's probably better just to watch it in the little YouTube window. That's my logic, so I may compress it more than I normally would, assuming that you're not going to be watching it on your 120-inch plasma. Okay, so I've rambled enough. Let's get this started. And I don't know, have I skipped over some videos yet? I may have, even to get to this screen, but let's go ahead and start the game.
Ilin Shada. Natura Premis Shai So, clearly, if the job's that important, don't leave it for your minion. Okay, I think I am going to turn down the background effects a little bit. Let's see. Well, let's, yeah, well. Let me turn speech up a little bit. Let's try that. I can always come in. You can see my settings now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll auto save. This has been reset on me because I had changed these. I might, I'm going to probably pause for apps because to get some of this to work, I'm going to have to quit out and come back in, but at least you get to see what settings I have. This is actually kind of a neat feature. There is a pick everything up button. When you uh, kill stuff, it drops all their loot on the ground and like Diablo does. And there's a grab everything button and you get to choose. Do we want to actually pick everything up? or just the gold and the uniques so leave the crap weapons on the ground or just pick up the gold now everything else that looks okay to me and we'll say okay to that and now I don't think the anti-aliasing has taken effect but maybe we'll just leave that for the next video okay the dream Shadar the necromancer conjures a demon and fails the beast from the depths of hell is free you awaken from deep meditation. Has this been a dream? Everything felt so real. Andukar is calling out to you. Maybe he will help you along. So, usually I would skip the tutorial. It's pretty lame how to open chests and that sort of thing, but what the heck. Welcome to Ankariel. In order to make... Oh, I sorry, it's not Ankariel. That's Ankaria! Exclamation mark. In order to make your first adventure as easy as possible, it's important... It, Game elements will be described in windows like these. You will also find general help screen if you press the H key. First steps. To begin with, you should do two things. Firstly, open the chest to look for items. Secondly, speak to the character who eagerly wishes to tell you something, indicated by the question mark above the character. Collecting items, chests, book stands, cupboards, barrels, and other objects which are highlighted when the mouse pointer hovers over them can be searched by pressing the left mouse button. Sometimes items will be uncovered. Also, defeated foes can drop items. Such items can be collected by simply left clicking on them. You can also use the collect all function, the A key. If you press and hold the Alt key, information about items currently lying around will be displayed. Collected items can be found in your inventory. So we've actually picked up something one of these little amulets and this one as you can see is abysmal choir abysmal choir plus one right click to add to your combat arts abilities so if I right click it goes in here which is essentially my skills the skill I started with is battle demon which is a self buff 
and then this is area of effect centered on me so I have this kind of cloud of doom that follows me around for a few seconds now at the moment I've got two skills this is kind of confusing for the first time going through it it confused me this is my armor of course and the amulets that I'm wearing but there's no weapons here that's not where they show up the weapons actually show up on the quick buttons so the current weapon I have equipped is rusty claws and you won't find them in my inventory they're actually stored right on that button I found that a little confusing I'm just used to having them show up over here on most games and as your character levels you get more of these buttons making it easier to switch between weapon types and also it's essentially additional inventory slots because you can keep I think up to five is the maximum five different sets of weapons pending and on this side magic skills so right click basically attack and the same thing I think it goes up to five levels uh, uh, making it easier to switch between them so there we go and then they wanted me to talk to this guy the time has come dear let me tell you this you know one should always keep an open mind to be honest well you are boring me it is no longer exciting with you by my side but since I am in a good mood today I'm not going to kill you you deserve to live yes you do but perhaps not here have fun up there! So you'll find that a lot. I don't know if you were reading along, but the text just sort of matches the voiceovers. And there's not a lot of voiceovers in this game, if I recall. So here I am. I've appeared in a graveyard. Now, one of the things I noticed at level... Well, I won't get into it. Uh, yeah, maybe now that I've mentioned it. At the silver level, I'm actually, I get hurt standing here This in this opening area. I'm actually like deteriorating just by standing here and it only stops once I leave. On bronze, that's not occurring, which is neat. Oh no, there I go, 12. I just lost 12 energy just for the standing. You see, I think it's, might be standing too close to the torches. Yeah, seems to be. You get too close to the torches and get burned, I guess. Now, you, it does give us the opportunity to show you this. You can see my health is regenerating. And you actually can adjust that with skills. You can make your health regenerate faster by applying skill points to it. In this game, however, skill points are few and far between. So you really have to make careful decisions on where you're putting them. Don't be surprised that your demonic powers are dwindling. I am what's left of your power to see into the future. However, even I am unable to uphold this manifestation for long. You are now on the upper world, exiled and stripped of your powers. The way back into the underworld is blocked. If you want to find Andukar and seek revenge, you will have to influence what is happening here on the upper world. You will only be able to return to the Underworld once Shadar has been defeated. Go and find the feeble human in Bellevue. Join the army of the humans and help them to kill Shadar. Go. So I suppose that's my motivation right there, is to fight my way back into the Underworld so I can, well, take my revenge on the guy that sent me up here in the first place. As I said, my opinion of the people of the underworld are, or is going to be in sort of this role-playing role that I'm going to attempt, pets or wild animals. So the same way I might, you know, throw a wild animal some food, I will deal with these humans and solve their quests. More of as a diversion than any particular desire to help them. It gives me an opportunity to go kill other things. Grave, a shroud, whiter than white. I open it, the body of a woman, and nothing else. Grave, grave, lobby 1.0. Open, and... What? 
My armor does not protect me from physical damage. And now past experience tells me this guy will stand back up a few times. He's undead, so he takes a few attempts to die. Luckily, the second, third, fourth time that he stands up, he has less health. And now we know he's dead because he completely exploded, so... You can also, you heard her complain that her armor wasn't doing much. And she will tell you that about many things, like if you're trying to fight ghosts with a non-magical weapon, I'm just making this up, but she might say, oh my, the goggles, they do nothing, or something like that. So you kind of have to listen to what she's saying. Grave, don't worry, I'll just, I'll just fix this up in a jiffy. Grave, I have the funny feeling the joke is on me. I am the body of a man and nothing else. So I noticed down here, I don't know if anybody else spotted it, but there's a glint. And you have to keep your eyes open for those because they don't show up when you hold down the alt key or anything like that. Whereas some of the other stuff lying around will. When you see that glint, it's an area that you want to walk over top of, and as you walk over top of it, it will basically react like a chest. Some stuff will shoot out of it. So, but I don't see the way over there right now. So we'll leave it for now. Room for one more! Room for one more! And there's two folks here, so I hope I haven't got myself into too much trouble. Oh! Apparently I did get myself into too much trouble. Now this game dying, well this early in the game, is not too bad. But there's actually some several negative effects so you want to avoid it and aside from this opening, this opening bit I will be avoiding it. I don't know what happened there. I'm assuming that's some sort of poison thing that opened because I killed that creature, not anything I did. So, let's see if I can... yeah, that must have been from the creature. If I can describe what happens when you die. First of all, you lose a chunk of your gold, which is never good, and it's a percentage, so later on in the game you lose a huge ton of gold every time you die. Then, apparently, there's something called... Let's see if I can find it. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but there is something about a life experience or some sort of vague thing like that. Basically, the longer you stay alive, the closer to a score of 100 you get. Oh, it's called Survival Bonus, and I just read about this, so I don't know where it shows up. And I just noticed this guy's face in the tree. So there's this thing called survival bonus, and the longer you survive, the higher it gets until it reaches 100. And once it's reached 100, all your attacks, it's a percentage of your attack. So when you die, your attacks do less until you recharge it back to 100. And I got the impression that actually takes quite a long time. So I'll probably be doing the thing where I quick save, and rather than actually let myself die, if I die, I'm going to load from a quick save and try again. Yeah, that's just an introduction. Equipment. Your character can be equipped with items found in your backpack. Clothing and jewelry can be worn by placing the items in the corresponding fields towards the right of your backpack. Weapons are placed in the slots to the left of the compass, as I said down here. The weapons in the selected slots are used to attack when the left mouse button is pressed on a foe. Pressing the right mouse button da -da -da, will automatically uh, pressing the right mouse button on an item will automatically equip it in the corresponding place on the character. If an item, armor for example, is collected and not already equipped by the character, it will be equipped automatically. So in other words, at the beginning of the game, you're not wearing anything, so the first time you pick up gloves, it will, excuse me, automatically wear them. Combat arts are special skills, I call them the magic skills or secondary attack. For your character to learn a new skill, you need to find and use, right mouse button, a rune. So that's what that little thing was called, was a rune. You will then learn a new combat art. 
which can then be placed in the slots to the right side of the compass and used by pressing the right mouse button on a foe. Now the compass down here, this arrow does not point north. The, um, obviously because north is always up in this game. The map doesn't turn as you're walking around as you'll see. This points to, as the crow flies, points to the nearest major quest. So that's kind of where we want to head. So how are we doing here? Any more graves left? Yep. That one's got nothing. He was never the life and soul of the party, and now he no longer has either. So I don't know if I ever gain, gain skills that may make it easier to permanently kill undead, I don't know. Now his skull functions like a gem in other games. I can apply it to a weapon that has slots for that sort of thing. So I just gained a level and you'll notice I now have two weapon slots and two combat art slots. And it looks like a crossbow I can actually use. Stuff is red if I can't use it, like these. Minimum level 9, so they're red. And I don't have anything that has gem slots. I'll show you what those like look like when I do find something. Well, let's level up. So I have one skill point I can apply to skills. Now, the two skills I have at the moment are Magic Lore, which increases damage caused by all spells. And in the case for me, spells are combat arts. And Weapon Lore, uh, this ability increases the damage dealt to a foe from close combat and ranged weapons. So weapon skill, basically, that sounds good to me. And then if I click on the skills, actually these, these screens, anything I point at will give me details. And there's some hidden stuff that you have to be, you will only find if you point in the right place. I was, last, I remember playing through this a while ago and I was constantly finding new status screens and things like that. So, now if I like attack, the last foe, it tells me details if I point at attack. Uh, was a bony dead, it was level 2, health 95. My own hit chance against him was 76%, and his chance to hit me was 31. Then damage, he was... It shows you these icons. Resistance, the bright one is... I can't point at it, because if I move my mouse up there, it disappears. But next to resistance, there's a shield with poison on it. So he's resistant to poison, considerably so. Then there is a dim shield with a sword on it. So he's slightly resistant to bladed weapons. So in this game, if I hit a skeleton with a mace, I'm going to do more damage than if I hit him with a sword. So very Dungeons and Dragons-like. And damage, I think the shield just means he is armored. Heavily armored. So I'm, again, I'm just moving the, the pointer around to make sure I don't miss any sort of status screens. Weapons. The weapon I'm using right now is 15 to 18 damage, and you can see the breakdown there of the speed, attack bonus, that sort of stuff. There's my survival bonus. There it is. Survival bonus 0%. I just died. I don't know if it started the game at 0, if it started at 100, and now I've lost it. I'm not sure. But So I'm losing some bonuses for, to my attacks because my survival bonus is at 0%. Combat Arts, we'll learn as we go, I guess, resistances, my resistances to fire and that sort of thing. Then, if we click on the Skills button, these are my attributes, Standard Stuff, Strength, Endurance, Dexterity, Physical re Regeneration is Regenerating Health, Mental Regeneration is how fast these recover. If I use these, you'll see these refill, uh, like a mana bubble, and in this case, this particular skill, Battle Demon, takes 26 seconds to regenerate but it also has a duration of 45 seconds so it regenerates faster than I use it which is which is nice but you can actually by adding mental regeneration that 
regeneration time will actually drop and actually that's where I'm going to put my point and as you can see it's gone down now to 26.9 seconds okay so that the first time I played this I actually missed that and I went quite a few levels before I noticed I had a whole bunch of attribute points piled up then we also have these combat ar arts that we can choose by picking up those runes that lights them up and I think I think the only way you can increase these is by adding more runes I don't remember we'll learn soon enough though so that's it I've leveled up let's continue around I think we're pretty much done here yeah here's the door introduction waypoints to help you with orientation there are three possible options the large window on the compass located at the bottom center of the screen will also show the always show the direction of the main quest so that's the main arrow with the tab key a mini map will appear showing the surrounding area red dots on the map indicate foes while white dots show important people and the world map shows your location within Caria itself now that breathing is her that's just <laughs> <laughs> just all the characters do that every once in a while they'll be standing there and they'll start panting so you'll have to get used to that that's not me doing that so tab is the mini map and you can actually make it transparent and let's actually go and mess with that a little bit I'd set all this up but it's all been reset options so map transparency I'm gonna go with none and fog of war I'm gonna turn off so now what's happened is it's completely transparent. You can adjust that so you can actually see her through it, which is not a bad idea because you can be attacked while you're looking at this map. But I've turned the transparency off. I've turned off Fog of War, which means the areas I haven't seen still show up, but you still have this nice Fog of War effect, so you still can tell the areas you have explored. So I like this. I don't think I'm spoiling anything by seeing ahead of the map not a big deal to me so and then the full map which is this one and there's not a zoom in there's this thing though if I click on it I get sort of a the mini map view that I can drag around which is kinda cool so I'm right in the middle and you can see there's stuff this is somebody that's a book so that's one of the guys I have to go and talk to and I think that's basically the primary quest there's where I started. Now down here, we haven't seen this area yet, but down here is desert. Anybody that's watched my Divine Divinity Let's Play, I was getting driven nuts because I remember distinctly, oh, you can see, this is huge. I remember distinctly this huge dev desert environment and I couldn't find it in Divine Divinity. That's because it's in sacred. This is the desert I was talking about. Okay, anyway, again, ramble, ramble rubble rubble introduction fighting in order to fight a left click on the enemy is all that's needed if you keep the left mutton mutton that would be old sheep if you keep the less left mouse button pressed the attack continues so no more uh, crazy click fest like in Diablo the chosen weapon will be used for this attack range fighters can hold down control key to stop the character from moving and as I said that's a little flaky because you really have to click precisely when you're control clicking on an enemy and if you miss the click it might look like you're shooting at them but you're gonna miss every time and I found that really frustrating and gave up on the range fighters sometimes the outcome of a fight is decided by the wise use of combat arts these are used when the right mouse button is pressed on an enemy combat arts need to be recharged before being used again so let's go ahead and turn on one of my combat ar arts I'm supposed to head this way but I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna run out of video time so I tell you what I will head that way usually when I play this myself I go up this way and around here and kind of get ahead of myself but so there's that buff I talked about my armor does not protect me well from fire okay well and you can see the buff has these swirling things so the buff lasts a little while and we're approaching a town 
Oh no, we were approaching a church, and this is actually the start location of one of the other characters. And if I hold down Alt, I can find the place, the things worth clicking on. Now some of the stuff you just kind of have to know, because like that stairway, that was a little hard to spot. Some houses in Sacred have more than one level, which can be reached through the use of stairs. These are not treated like doors, but a normal pathway. Just click on the stairs you want to use, or left click and hold to go up or down the stairs. So yeah, stairs are really easy to miss and sometimes really hard to spot, and they don't show up with the Alt key. Every time I see candles after Divine Divinity, I, I try to light them, but these ones I can't do that. So we'll basically follow along the path so we can wrap this up. Because this really is supposed to be only an introduction video, so... Now, I don't know if you noticed there, I was kind of running around, having trouble attacking. That's what I mean by it's a little flaky to click on these characters. They could have done a better job there, but you just have to live with it. And I'm going to zoom out. Now, these are non-fighting characters, and you can see they're all upset. Well, that's because I'm a demon. And, yeah, run for your life, is what that said. I'm a demon, and I'm walking through their town. I have to leave, run away. Quests! All over the world there are citizens who need your help. The needy ones are indicated by a question mark exclamation mark symbol above their heads. In order to talk to them, just click on the person. Rejected quests can be taken up at a later time. All quests are written into your logbook. Press the L key. The picturing indicates the affected area or quest goal. The large arrow indicator of the compass always shows the direction of the main quest while the small indicator shows the direction of the currently active subquest. I don't think we've seen a small indicator yet, which can be selected from your logbook. Remember though, not all subquests have a direction indicator. For example, go kill 20 goblins. Well, it's up to you to find the goblins. <laughs> what that is. Sundial, built by a dwarf in Port Draco. Run for your life! I think this is actually... let's head on in here. No, this is just somebody's house. I can't remember from my previous let's... Uh, my previous playthrough, it wasn't a let's play, it was years ago. If I ever get enough of a local reputation that they just stop screaming and running away. It doesn't really affect quest characters or anything like that, so it's just for show. It won't prevent you from doing the game. Guards won't attack you or that kind of thing. Introduction. Experience. By defeating enemies and completing quests, you gain experience points. Once a certain amount has been collected, your character will increase a level. Leveling will allow you to increase your character statistics and skills. Additionally, a plus icon will appear next to the character portrait, giving you the opportunity to either improve your current skills or add new ones. These will appear at the top right of the inventory screen. Improve your current skills by left-clicking on the plus key next to the respective skill. At certain levels, you can also add a new skill. Your choice will depend on the type of character you wish to create. And the plus key, it was not this. All this does is it shows you... It's not even a button. It just shows you the stats. Weapon damage, physical, 22% dexterity, blah blah blah. So I'm going to skip these side quests for now and just run straight to the primary quest. Which I think is this guy, because he has a gold question mark over his head. Ramada, commander of Bellevue. A demonic succubus in our town? What the... I don't suppose that you came with hospital intelligence, else this city would likely be in ruins already. 
The king needs all the assistance that he can get, and valuable fighters such as you are always welcome. These are strange times where all kind of beings and races stand together. I will give you a letter of recommendation for Treville. As of now, you will serve Prince Valor, who is fighting against the orcs of Korad Nur in the south. Here, take this gold and purchase a horse from the stables. Oh, before I forget, be sure to practice your skills during your journey. I am sure there will be many trials waiting for you in Silver Creek or Port Vallum. And there we go. There's our first quest and 2300 gold completed. And I think we're at the end of our video. Now, it did say to purchase a horse. And as I recall, uh, they work as advertised. I mean, they speed up your travel. But my last playthrough, as I call, I didn't. I mostly stayed off the horse. But then again, so I. I did the same thing with Oblivion. For some reason I don't like horses in these games. Part of it is you've got to get off them to fight. So, especially traveling in new areas, you're constantly getting on and off your horse, and it's just a pain. Easier just to run around. I can't remember if there's teleporters or anything in this game. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. But with that, this looks like it's going to be my next Let's Play, folks. So I hope you enjoy it. And I thank you for watching, and I thank you for listening. I encourage you to leave comments, suggestions, or infantile abuse. I promise I read them all. And if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel or give me the thumbs up. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks. Cheers.